everyone. Today and this weekend we've been exploring Newcastle. The main reason why we've come is to explore Beamish and as you'll see in the video we've gone around as much of it as we possibly can today but a couple of other things we've done this weekend as well which we're taking you along with us. So yeah I hope you enjoy and let's explore Beamish. So if you haven't guessed, today we're in Beamish, which is like an open air museum from Edwardian Victorian times and the 50s. It costs 25 pounds to enter. And if you pay one admission, you get an annual pass. So you get to come back, but it's bigger than I thought it was gonna be. So I'll show you what's around, but so far it's amazing. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. We've essentially time slipped. Oh, and Beamish is about a half an hour drive from Newcastle city centre. So it's a really good day trip if you're in Newcastle. Do you have a shilling, sir? a lot of money. <laughs> can I please borrow a shilling? You could. I want to go on the carousel. Can I please borrow a shilling? It is a shilling. It's a wreck. It should be... How much is a shilling? It's 12, 12p. Oh, God. It was 12 shilling 12p. Because we had this stupid system. You know, like, miles are stupid, really, but we use them anyway. Hey, don't get offensive to the shilling. No, no, no. It was stupid. It was... If you have a non-decimal monetary system, it's ridiculous. So what you so the you know decimals better. It was like sixpence. Wait, was there a six, yeah? There's a half penny. Yeah, half penny shilling, tuppence. Shilling, which I think was like twelve p or something, or something like that. Look, have you got or any money or not? Twenty-four p. I don't know. <laughs> um, Jar Sitch. The little elephant coming would be called Beamish. Beamish the elephant. I can't believe they're gonna go on that. How was the hell of scouter? Yeah, actually quite fast. Yeah, I said that. Yeah. You got a bit of rhythm from that guy. So I thought it'd take you a couple of minutes to come down. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was, oh, that was good. I've done that for sort of thing for years. It's really windy up there. It's higher than it looks. Is there a an attendant up there then? Yeah. Yeah, I thought that. 
we were contemplating whether it was someone that got up there and realised that they were too scared. And they were like, yeah, this is just our life now. <laughs> yeah, do you want to have a look? No. Oh my god. You can really feel the wind. Well done, you guys are brave. Like I said, you couldn't even pay me a token to do that. Really? It wasn't very Victorian in those metal stairs. I imagine they were probably wooden and way more dangerous back in the day. Fire. Yeah. Thrill yeah. seekers had to take more risk in the Victorian era. I'm going to try and show you around everywhere today, but just from memory, we've got a 1900s town, a 1900s village, and an 1820s village. Then we've got farms, we've got a fun fair, and I think that's it. And then obviously all the trains and everything, but in the towns, I think there's pubs and shops and stuff. So honestly, this is just like the best, like the best place ever. I'm so excited. It's my understanding that most things are real and authentic as well and it was a collection that was started by the guy who wanted to build this place it's not like a disneyland type place it's actually all authentic stuff that they've managed to find and put together in this collection which is just amazing The town part of it now. What do yeah. you think, Pete? Yeah, it's so cool. There's a, there's a little house we can go in. Oh, there's another house we can go in. We've got the dentist. Should we go to the now. dentist? Yeah. I need a scale and polish. I, I actually do, so let's see what the room for is. There's a fire. So this house was taken down brick by brick and then rebuilt. And it was a dentist house. Yeah. Oh my God, look. Yeah. It's Can you believe scary, that though. it was taken down brick by brick? I, oh, that's amazing. And then well. rebuilt. Yeah, that's amazing. They took pictures of everything and then they moved it from some part of Newcastle to here, along with this entire street and then rebuilt it. Incredible. Oh, here's the shower. The crazy construction. Oh. Wow. Yeah, the man asked me if I had an indoor toilet and I said no. <laughs> I've got to keep in character. Exactly. I'm a Victorian peasant. I, you know, I don't have these sorts of things. Do you reckon you put it in between your feet? And have it on either side, have them on either side. Yeah. Yeah. Foot warmer. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't started yet. Sam? Sam, have you found a public house? Look. Oh, let's have a look. Of course. Well, that's a bit expensive on my halfpenny wage, my five shilling wages. At the moment, we can always drive the later. Yeah. So far, we've done the 1900s town, which is what we're in now. And uh, there's a travel agent, there's a dentist, a print works, a pub, there's tea rooms, and there's other types of shops for like clothes <laughs> and like pottery crockery i think there's a bank somewhere you can buy cars and carriages basically 
everything that you can imagine and they're all really detailed as well so we've been here like probably nearly two hours already we've only got to all the one 1900s town so we've still got so much to explore now coming to the tea room where you can get some pretty traditional kind of English food and um, quite reasonable portions and prices as well and it's all like everything's all wooden and old and traditional we've gone with the vegetarian cottage pie there's tea rooms in the 1900s town and yeah you can get tea coffee cakes scones hot food and it's all done like cafeteria style as well there is a fish and chip shop Apparently, it has a vegetarian option, but obviously for everyone else watching this, you can get whatever you need, fish and chips. That's in the 1950s town, which I think we are heading to next, so we will be going forward in time even more. Yeah, there's a lot, there is a lot to do. Yeah. I think that's why they give you the annual ticket, because you'd have to really rush around to do all yeah, of this in would. one day. But we are going to try. We're going to try. You know, we're only here until later. One of the first photographs ever taken. 1826. 1826. And then that one's 1838. Apparently that'll be Paris, one said. So I found a bakery. I'm very excited. Look. Um, yes, that might be ginger cake. Yeah, I think it is. They've got some really cool things. They've got dark ginger sponge, tea loaf, apple sponge, cherry biscuit. Beamer's gingerbread. Oh, it smells amazing in here. Yeah. What are we gonna get? Um, Hello. Hello. No, no, no. That's a cherry biscuit. Yeah, there's a cherry biscuit. What are you gonna get? Ginger cake. Ginger cake. Yeah, I fancy a cake, but then also, if you get a cake and get a biscuit, bite of each. Okay, deal. And I'll bite of yours as well. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So let's try these then. So this is gingerbread. Sorry. I thought I thought it was gonna be spongy. Gingerbread's hard. And for some reason it looked like it was spongy. I'll have to it be looks careful. bloody good, is what it looks right, like. Is it one pound sixty? I don't even know. I didn't even care really. Wow. Mm. What's it like? Really hard. Not that gingery though. Okay. Well, that's good. It's good. Would you like some, sir? I mean, <laughs> 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 How did that even happen? Oh my god, we're going to take you to the dentist and have your teeth out after that. <laughs> and then look at this. Is this the ginger sponge? Yeah. It's very moist. Good. Mm. Yeah, my granddad used to make cake like that. So, which one's better? This one. And which one's more gingery? This one. Okay. Sounds good. The gingerbread's got a nice flavour, but it's not as gingery. We're now heading into the 1950s, everyone. The fish and chip shop is absolutely packed. Um, 
but the newspaper that fish and chips used to come in probably not got the poison that the original ones used to have but it's absolutely random now I don't think it's worth queuing up there's so much more to see we know what chips taste like but it's a nice offering these caramels turnip caramels are my favourite thing ever this is a 50s So we're now in a 1950s house. I'll have a seat, I think. Follow me. What do you think? Does it remind you of Yolanda house? It does. Yeah. We definitely had something like this in my nan's house. I think before they had everything renovated when I was small. Yeah, it's probably a bit more dated. Maybe my uh, nan and pup's house was a bit more 70s build, but there's definitely resemblances to... Oh, thanks for popping in. What can I get you? A cup of tea? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can't stop, can't you? Well, I've just brewed something. You might as well have one while you're here. Hello, everyone. So, we're now on the 50s bus. And we're, we're heading to the 1900s Pip Village, which will probably be the last thing that we can do today. Yeah, because, it closes at four. Yeah, it closes at four of the winter, and it's absolutely massive. You just don't realise. We spent nearly two hours just in the 1900s town. That's what we did. So, and that's just one element of it. So, this is the map. As you can see, that's where we're going. And that's where we went to. The town is huge. So you definitely, when you get that annual pass, it's for a reason. Yeah. But we'll show you the rest of it and see when we have to leave Beamish. But we'll see what the 1900s pit village is like. It's lived up to every expectation, don't you think? Yeah, it's been really good. Really good. Better than I thought. Yeah, much better than I thought. I didn't think it would be this big. I yeah. thought everything would be really close together. But it's huge. It's like the size of a big town, isn't it? Every, like loads of farmlands and everything and uh, the best thing about it is that like the landscape around it what I mean is it's just like it's almost like a standalone like theme park so yeah. you're not aware of anything else it's not like oh look there's another town over there or something it's like you're, you are yeah. on your own in this place yeah that's it so you're not like spoiled by like some massive like 21st century skyscraper like ruining the vibe you can't see anything like that yeah so you do really feel like you're here all the staff are really good as well like really knowledgeable and in character yeah. and the dentist shout out to him he was great <laughs> oh wow Just little Victorian dogs. Hello. This is the old colliery. Is that how you say it? It is. I didn't even know what a colliery was until just now. I thought it was always called a coal mine. You've been schooled. You learn something new every day. You <laughs> sure do. We're learning a lot here, considering how educational it is but also very very uh interactive well i just like that it's really original that's the main thing 
that a lot of the stuff is actually from the time. Um, if they needed to make anything, I'm sure they did, but a lot of it's been kept and preserved since the 1950s. But I think that's the best part about this. I know I keep going on about that, but it is. I thought you loved me. Love me. Yesterday, Beamish. If you're in Newcastle, you have to go. It was so good. Yeah. And then the night before, we did some golf, which used to be ghetto golf, but it's changed. And that's it. That's how to spend a weekend in Newcastle, I think. Yeah, it's a really good weekend. It's been a great weekend. I'm, I'm windswept as hell, but it was a good weekend. It was. So that was that. We'll see you in the next one, I think. We're going to wrap things up. Bye.